G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some nominations for surprise or smoky All-Australian players for the 2021 season. To be clear, this is not looking at the players that I think are Monty's for All-Australian picks. You can probably name quite a few off the top of your head. Your Bonts, your Dusties, your Jack Steels at this stage. This list is more about nominating some more outside chances, someone who might be a surprise nomination for the team, someone who's either considered over the hill or perhaps a little bit young and raw, or someone that just hasn't been deemed good enough to make the All-Australian team up until this point. In this video, I'm going to nominate 10 players that I think are an outside chance to make the All-Australian team this year. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying all of these players will make the All-Australian team. A lot of them will be at least in the frame for at least the top 40 squad. So there's a good chance some of these players don't quite hit that mark this year. But based on what I've seen, these players do have a small chance of getting a jumper. Before I get into the video, I do notice in my analytics that it looks like about 55% of you who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel. So if you're enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate you taking the time time to hit subscribe. It's been a great start to the year so far for the channel. I really appreciate all the support. But if you've been a little bit hesitant and haven't quite hit subscribe yet, just, just do it now. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into this list. Now, first up, I'm going to nominate the Adelaide Crows key forward, Taylor Walker. It's probably the biggest surprise and yet probably the one I'm almost most confident will be an All-Australian player at the end of the year. He's currently leading the Coleman. I think he's on something like 22 goals. He's averaging 17 disposals, 3.4 marks inside 50s and incredibly four and a half goals per game. On top of that, he's averaging two and a half contested marks, which is great as well. But I think the most dangerous asset is his goal kicking. He's really dangerous from long range. When he marks it within about 55 meters of the goals, there's a good chance he's going straight through the middle. Now, I did remark during the Frio game, once Taylor Walker sort of got that little injury and had to go off for a little bit, Adelaide sort of lost their confidence going forward. And I think he's a really key player. So if they can keep up their team momentum, Taylor Walker should be right in the thick of the All-Australian race. Next up, I'm going to nominate Port Adelaide's bang recruit, Aaliyah Aaliyah, who is absolutely making a name for himself this year as a key defender for the power. He obviously crossed from Sydney last year. I think they've got pretty much like a second rounder for him, which in hindsight is looking like a pretty raw deal. We saw the promise he had at Sydney. He's obviously a really athletic player, but he's really putting it together at Port Adelaide, in particular that game against Carlton. I think he was ranked the fourth best player on the field and kept a dangerous Harry Mackay to five disposals and one goal. He reads the play so well, and he also sets up rebound attacks as well. So he's a pretty well-rounded defender, and with this current momentum, he's a good chance to be an All-Australian defender. The next player I'll nominate is Hawthorne's Chankuth G and I am fairly confident I'm saying that correctly. Going into this year, he was considered a pretty raw and speculative talent. In fact, he'd only played seven games at AFL level up till this year, but I think he's caught a lot of people's eye this year with his rebound and athleticism coming out of the back half. He's averaging 21 disposals a game and seven and a half marks per game as well, and he's been a shining light in a Hawks team that's kind of scrambling for all the young talent they can get. Do I necessarily think he'll be consistent enough to be an All-Australian halfback? I'd probably bet against it at this stage, but he's probably a good shout for the top 40, which is a really good achievement. Next, I'm going to nominate another player who we all thought was over the hill, or at least if you're not from WA, you probably would be fair to assume that, but David Mundy at 36 years old or whatever he is, is having a career best season. He's averaging 25 disposals, 390 meters gained, and he's also involved in 7.4 scores per game for Fremantle, which is just elite. I don't think the stats really justify the case for him, but he's so classy, so composed, and definitely one of Fremantle's best players this year. In fact, I would go as far as to say that he's probably a starting midfielder in the All-Australian team if it were picked right now. The next outside chance I'll nominate for an All-Australian position is Carlton Sam Walsh. We were asked on the Drew Footy show if Sam Walsh was a good chance to make the All-Australian this year. And at the time, I commented that I didn't really see it. And to be fair, I think my reason for that is justified. There's probably only six to seven realistic All-Australian spots for a midfielder. And that's why getting into that top seven right now is super competitive. And I'd probably have Walsh just outside that group. But he is putting together a pretty elite season. 30 disposals a game, six clearances. And like David Mundy, 7.4 score involvements a game. He's been super important for Carlton, just about their best midfielder as well. I'd be very confident in saying he's going to make the squad of 40 as a minimum, but I don't know if he'd quite crack the starting midfield yet, but it is a long season and he has surprised me before. Next up, I'm going to nominate Port Adelaide's running defender, Dan Houston, who's putting together a very nice season before going down with a bit of an injury last week. He averages 22 disposals off the halfback, 418 metres gain, but to be fair to him, those numbers are skewed by the fact that he was injured in one of those games. Dan Houston has been a very good running back for the last couple of years, and some people might say, it's not a huge surprise if he makes the All-Australian team, but he hasn't made the team before, so I'm going to include him in this. Next up, I'll nominate one of Gold Coast's probably understated 
dedicated young stars, Jack Bowes is putting together a very good season off the halfback flank for them. With all the elite talent that Gold Coast have on their list, mostly Raul, Anderson, Lukosius, Rankin, Ben King, you sort of almost forget that they had this academy player who was a top 10 pick only a few years ago, and he's really coming to his own off that halfback role. He's averaging 28 disposals a game, 515 meters gained, and 7.6 rebound 50s, which are all elite numbers, and I think he's been one of their best players in a tough year. Next, I'm going to nominate Richmond small forward Kane Lambert, who's having a very understated season with 24 disposals a game and one and a half goals as well. Again, pretty established player. I think he's 29 years of age and always been a very decent player for the Tigers. So you might say this isn't a real surprise if he gets close, but he hasn't made the All-Australian team before and he's also got some stiff competition for small forwards. But when you look at other small forwards from last year, Dan Butler and Liam Ryan are both a out of form or injured. There's a bit of an opportunity for someone like a Lambert to surprise and I think he's putting his best foot forward. He's seventh in the comp for score involvements. He gets amongst it and he's a player I like to watch. I'll go as far as to say I'll be surprised if he's not in the squad of 40 come year's end. Next, I'm going to nominate a very young and raw player and some people might suggest that I'm probably going a little bit early on this guy, but I think Trent Rivers is starting to catch some eyes around the competition. Again, he's probably another player like Giath who is probably more of a shot for the squad of 40, but he had 21 disposals against the Hawks and executes really well under pressure. I think he's a very classy player and he's already an important player for the Ds in what could be a year where they contend for top four and beyond. I think he'd need to improve on his current output to really be in the frame for All-Australian selection, but he could be like a Zach Butters last year who had a really big ascension throughout the year. He's a very talented kid. I'd love to see how close he can get this year. Finally, I'm going to go with yet another Port Adelaide player on this list. I'm nominating Carl Amon as an outside chance to be an All-Australian wingman this year. He's averaging 22 and a half disposals, nearly 500 metres gained per game and five and a half score involvements. The numbers don't sound absolutely breathtaking, but he does use the ball very well and I always find Port Adelaide look dangerous when he's got the ball in his hands. He's definitely broken out in recent times, playing to a level I don't think he's ever played before and I think a lot will come down to whether the All-Australian team decide to pick actual wingmen this year because if they do, someone like Amon or even an Ed Langdon suddenly put their hands up, otherwise they might end up cramming it with midfielders and these guys will probably miss out. But he's a player I'd like to nominate as having a very good season today. So that's a list of 10 players that are an outside chance to make the All-Australian team or even perhaps the 40. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. There were some unlucky players I left out, someone like a Kyle Hooker, a Josh Bruce even, or even an Oscar Allen at the moment look like they could be outside chances, but I figured it was a little bit too competitive for those guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video though, guys, and make sure to stick around on the channel. I recently did a power rankings for the first five rounds of the season, trying to rank where each team is in terms of the premiership race. Also, make sure you stick around to catch our weekly Just a Tip show and our podcast that we do every few weeks. We're smashing the content hard here at True Footy at the moment, and it'd be great to have you along for the ride. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.